Alright guys, welcome to the Invitational, the semi-finals of the winner's brackets. We have House of Lords versus the Swords of Kantares. We missed drop one, it looks like. You guys didn't quite get to see that, but that is okay. We will be continuing with drop number two. So, I am the Raffle Waffle. I am glad to be here, and with me is my co-host. Serial Thrax from Steel Jaguar Gaming. Slightly irritated that we missed drop one. Hashtag... Never trust Addy. Somebody's getting a 24-hour TS ban! No, I'm just kidding. I love you, man. Uh, <laughs> so, we uh, missed the first drop due to some stream troubles, but that is just fine. Uh, House of Lords was able to take that first drop in a uh, fairly decisive manner. They were up on caps and on kills. A good play by them, sort of drawing in, forcing SDBK's hand on Termaline. It was a good fight. But now we have got fight number two. Uh, what map is this on, Siri? I believe that this is going to be Frozen City Night at 625 times. This is still a relatively light drop compared to, to what you'd be getting overall in a 12v12, but it allows you to sprinkle in some heavies, and if you're really aggressive, some assaults into your drop deck of 12. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting drop. Uh, with all of these taking place on Conquest, some of the bigger maps definitely experience some different play styles. But on Frozen City Night, that's one of those maps that just stays the same. It's always a close brawl, it's always a fun match, I really enjoy it. Um, I know actually LEGO removed Frozen City Day because he just hates that map, and I think the, the official ex the reason was that there are some FPS issues on it. But So Frozen City Night is the only Frozen City that's in the tournament. So I'm excited, I love this map, I think you get some good brawls, you get to see the, the, the rotation strategies used to their maximum effect on maps like this. So. That'll be nice. And part of why that is, is because there's a lot of buildings that cut the map up into different areas, and it's too tight in most positions to slam your entire team through there. So you end up chasing through the buildings, splitting up around, trying to get your formation onto the back of theirs. Like you said, it's called the rotation game, if anybody is unfamiliar with the concept. And to this strategy, it is very important for you to have fast, mobile, and high firepower mechs. So things like the Shadowhawk, things like the Dragon Slayer are perfect for the strategy. I agree. I think it'll be interesting. Let's actually just bring up the map really quick once I get that all figured out. Frozen City. Well, before you get into that, I think we actually have to go over our breakdown of what t the teams are good at. Oh, that's again, true. Yep. Because that was kind of overridden, quite rudely. Ah, oh, I agree. Okay, so before, you guys probably couldn't hear us when we did it, but... um. The uh, so we talked a little bit about where each team has come from. So Lords is a fairly new team to the scene. Uh, they have, have however been very 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 successful. Uh, they are all around good players with a preference leaning slightly towards jump sniping. Um, they have taken what is, their win record is something really like ridiculous. Well, if I recall correctly, they were first entered the comp scene in season three of Run Hot or Die after kind of wondering if they were going to do it because what it was it was sort of a club for the best in the game from different units and they didn't actually participate in tournaments until season three of run hot or die where people half goaded them into it half they wanted to just uh demonstrate their skill but in the regular season, I believe they went 13-0 and 0 in terms of matches, and only dropping, I think, two games the entire season. And they did end up as the eventual victors of the tournament, uh, defeating Steel Jaguar for first place. And these two teams, the SWK and Lords, last met when they played in Run Hot or Die, and it was a 3-0 and a 3-1 result in favor of the House of Lords. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm just making sure, sorry, uh, Haim just poked me. He'll let us know when they drop or get close, etc. 
Excellent. Okay. All right, killer. Uh, we are actually live. We do have the channel, so nobody can take it from us now. Awesome. Want to tell us a little bit about SWK, or should I take that? Ah, uh, go ahead. All right, SWK is a team with a bit more history than oh, they just dropped House of Lords. They started. Oh, they just dropped. Apparently, yes, they did. Okay, into game we go. We'll get to that later. Okay, everyone, this is going to be Frozen City Knight, 625 tons, 12v12, on Conquest, 750 resources, or kill your opponents for the win. Alrighty. Spawning in and blue. In blue, in blue, we are going to have the House of Lords, and in red, we are going to have SWK. So House of Lords has taken high, or has spawned on high side, correction, they don't actually get to pick that, it's chosen by the tournament. So they've spawned high side and it looks like they are moving down, gonna try and get their point very, very quickly, and then move to the back of the hill like everybody else. Or it looks like SWK, their initial position is, they are crowding the southern side of the dropship, Shadowhawks on their cap point, and then I imagine they will go for a push into lower city. Aurora and the Jenner is just getting a quick scout on the dropship here, trying to see what he can see. Trying to see if he can suss out the loadouts from the House of Lord, which is three cataphracts, five mediums, and four lights, a mix of Jennerefs and Embers. SWK is moving down low at what we call just the bold low dropship here, with their entire force, which seems to be all, all Shadowhawks Shadow and two lights. Yep. House of Lords is taking, going through the pocket up high here, trying to get shots down into them. They do have the better cover, better position to snipe from. SWK, knowing this, is continuing to just push up and try and get this rotation game going. And this is what I talked about yeah, with like the are... restoration strategy used really well. We see the Lords trying to cut Twinkie in behind Overlord SWK. Being... Oh, Twinkie yeah, got Twinkie legged! Overlord is being legged and taken out off the back here. Oh, He's Twinkie's already down. already down. Two UAVs are actually up from SWK, but it doesn't look like they're going to do a ton of good. Lords are still sort of outside of that range. One comes up from the Lords to make sure they don't get flanked behind too quickly so they know where those targets are. Imminent is being caught out here by himself away from the rest of the heavies, and it also looks like Third World has been legged in a Shadowhawk. Uh, the Lords are actually doing a really good job of designating down these targets and taking down these Shadowhawks. Three mechs, all Shadowhawks already down for SWK, but they do have a ton of them. Looks like they're getting in behind the Lords now, trying to focus down uh, Rat Goat, but another another Shadowhawk has already been legged for SWK in PSU. Lords, it looks like, are actually sitting a little bit at the top of the dropship, firing down, not continuing this rotation as strongly as they had before, but they are up 5-0 to zero in kills, so they are in a position where they can sort of take a seat and make sure that they're firing down, playing it clean. Another mech goes down for SWK. This is looking really brutal for them. It is almost 8 to... It's 8-0 right now with... Ratgoat's Griffin is down to 24%, and he's just tanking like a boss, and he's actually managed to disengage and stay alive. Two left, Captain Terrific, Bradley USM, Shadowhawk, and Jenner. Shadowhawk's going down, he's down, it's just Captain Terrific's Jenner left. What happened there, uh, from my observation, Eyes in the Sky, was that... Wow. Lords, when they pushed in... Wow, they just took this 12-0. Lords, when they pushed in, they were all as one. They had a unity of purpose when they were swimming around, so all their guns were in the same place. None of them got caught off the back. However, when SWK pushed through these buildings up from low dropship, they got split a little, and so their formation was a bit more strung out. Twinkie got caught almost immediately off the back. As soon as Lords ro uh, rounded that low dropship, uh, they found him, they liked him, he died. And at that point, SWK was strung out all the way between these buildings and Pocket. And some of their guys seemed to want to go over the dropship and continue the rotation, and a few others wanted to stay back and cut off. And all in all, that meant, at a guess, that they maybe had half their guns active in that initial stage. And this being an attrition-based game, the first kill spirals hard. And so That's what the I... initiative, the aggression on that attack, was definitely in House of Lords' favor. 
and it just, that momentum just continued to play through the entire match. Well, and so what I mentioned at the beginning about uh, this being a, a good example of the rotation strategy, it's a really perfect example because you get, so each team starts off at a fairly even position and the rotation is what matters. It's trying to rotate faster and quicker and tighter than your opponent and get behind them. And so what we saw here, and I'm gonna bring up the map. So if we put SWK in yellow, they push down from their point Epsilon, and then they sort of spread out through the lower city here. So they went some mechs like this, some like this, and some really tight to the dropship. Now this tight to the dropship line, that's the one you want to take, because you want to be making sure that you are like sheltering yourself from enemy fire and also getting as close to their back as you possibly can. Meanwhile, the Lords, who we'll use red for this, the Lords cut up over the dropship and then immediately down the side, got right behind them and then kept this rotation going being as tight as they possibly could. And what that allows them to do is catch mechs in the back. And because they were able to come around that corner so tightly while SWK still had mechs out in the lower city, they were able to get up kills really, really quickly and then just keep that lead going. Good game. Yeah, I don't really have much more to end <laughs> to that analysis. It was pretty good. Uh, quick, brutal game, fun to watch. Over very rapidly. Yeah. Well, and that like a lot of. I was just gonna say that's fortunate because we still have to introduce us to BK. We still haven't gotten to that. So. Okay, I guess I'm stepping up to the bat on this one. <laughs> I believe what I was saying before they, we got into the game was that SWK has a bit of a longer history. And they've sort of absorbed or assimilated a couple other teams over their uh, existence. And I can't quite remember who it was at the beginning that initially these teams came together and formed the one super team. But most recently they have picked up quite a few players from the dissolution of the Blackstone Knights. Another one of the top units that was around for a while, but ended up breaking up, I think, what is it, about two and a half, three months back now? A while ago, and I, I <laughs> missed them. BSK was fun. And they've had members go to a couple different places, but I believe the issue was just that they couldn't sustain the activity necessary. Uh, and so that's really helped them get into a better form in recent times. But their history involves, I believe it was season two of Merrick. They walked away from Merrick Civil War as the top unit and proved that they were quite adept at the Conquest game. Conquest and... has always sort of been SWK's thing. Like just for, I remember for a while back, back before Lord started playing when it was really just you guys and SWK, it was sort of like, you guys won Arhad matches and SWK won Merrick matches. And that's just kind of like how it was. SWK just felt at home in Conquest. It was something about their style of play. They were just terrific at it. And it seems like they've they sort of spent some more time on working on other game modes. And so I, I wouldn't say that they've lost that effect, but it's definitely not as apparent as it used to be. Well, one thing to note is that these past two games have been on maps that are not conducive to the full extent of conquest turning into a cap game. Frozen City Knight, or Frozen City in general, is actually one of the worst for that cap game style. And if we're going to look at the lineup here, in fact, the first three games here are on Tourmaline, Frozen City Knight, and River City at 725 tons is coming up next. And neither, none of these are really all that good at conquest. Yep. I'd say the two of them are too small, and the other one gets a bit choke pointed and fighting over Theta, so it turns into a brawl. Now, APG Manifold, yeah, which be game four, has the potential to turn into a cap game. So here's the, actually the interesting thing. So. HPG, I mean, Terra Therma is harder to do cap on, but if one team pushes for center and you get up on caps quickly and you bring the faster team, it's definitely doable. So I think it's going to be interesting because if SWK can take this next game or game four, it means to be able to go to Terra Therma. And if they were able to take Terra Therma, they, they get more and more like really conquest heavy maps as they go on. Crimson Straits is actually a very surprising conquest map because because of how divided it is by the mountain i've actually 
like I've lost games to caps on that that you just don't think you're going to lose because if you wait the traditional amount of time for engagement a couple of those points are just so far away from everything else that you have to commit forces to and it's just not worth it so if if we see SDBK uh, pull out a couple games here I think that that conquest's aptitude will sort of become more apparent right and there's also like you said it's going into uh, HBG, it's going into Alpine, it's going into Terra Therma, and it's going into Crimson Straits. So if SWK, sorry, yes, SWK can tough out this first section, win a couple of these fights, and not backslide too much on the momentum, then they could rally if they play to their strength here. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that What's really hard to do in a series is it's really hard to shake off the losses, especially against a team like Lords. You really just gotta be like, alright, we lost. That really fucking sucks, but let's get back to it, let's focus, and let's try and take these next games. Let's take the maps that are gonna be more conducive to our playstyle. So, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I definitely think they can do it. They are definitely a capable team. So. Alright, uh, let's take a quick look at who these guys beat to get here. So we have uh, Lords actually took out me, my team. We lost to the Lords to get them uh, into these semifinal rounds. Uh, that was actually a very, very commanding game from them. Um, they had, you know, outstanding performance as usual. Uh, they caught us off guard in a couple of very, very key engagements and just outplayed us, to be honest. So I have to say. Uh, I would put my money on Lords purely because they have been practicing so much lately and just like the sheer amount of willpower these guys have to play the game for just hours on end is unbelievable. Like my practices are like a couple like few hours. Like that's that's what I can get in a day of serious competitive work. These guys play just all day sometimes and it's absolutely insane. So these guys are putting in a ton of work. Um SWK, however, they, they took out you guys coming in here, didn't they, Siri? They did. It went to a, I believe it was game seven. Was it game seven or was it game six? Game six. Again. Four to two. Okay, yes. Got the, I've got the nice thing up. Want to link that to me? Yes. A talk. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, they defeated Black, or... No, they had a bye first round, they defeated SIG second round, and they defeated SJR 4-2 in the third round. And so now this is the winner's bracket finals, the only two teams that are undefeated so far. And after this, whichever team loses is going to be knocked down to the loser's bracket, and they'll have a chance to claw their way back in and demand vengeance. Yes. So the the loser of this game will face. Um, so we actually have a couple games yet to be played. So the loser of this game will move down to slot K, and then we'll have. Uh, so we have two twenty eight has to play Sig, uh, and then the winner of that game will move on to place the play the winner of Steel Jag versus Golden Kashyyyk, and so the winner of that match then will move on to face the loser of this game. I'm going to link this to chat so they can understand. Yeah, good call. In, like, five minutes. Yeah, of course. The whole, they're going to get the link now and be like, I'm a little lost. Why are they linking this to me? Okay, so... Next map. So, the next map is River City. Again, traditionally a pretty quick match. What do you think... Do you think either team is going to go for anything uh, like interesting? Well, if this is the match and tonnage to do it on, uh, rather, if there's any match or tonnage that's going to give us perhaps a more disparate style, it would be this one. River City, there are opportunities for you to play snipe game. If you go up into the upper city or the upper base, you've got some good high ground that you can defend with long sight lines if you want to be a sniper and then just send your lights out to cap points, flip it, etc. Or you can bring brawlers and look for a quick fight. It's unlikely that you're going to want to take it to a cap game in that sense, but you're going to be quickly jockeying around trying to find the angle. Now why I say this is because 725 tons, 700 tons, you get a lot of options in how you want to put the composition of your team together. 
You can do a very uh, polarized style with uh, lots of assaults, lots of lights, or you can do uh, heavies, mediums, assaults, heavies, mediums, lights. It's the most flexible. On the light ones, you really don't have the time to do a lot of assaults. It's more efficient just to do mediums and lights. And on the heavy ones, you need to be close enough to the max tonnage to that you're basically forced to bring at least oh four or five assaults, perhaps more, depending if you do lights, mediums, heavies to fill out the rest. I think they're in. Are they? Uh, no, not, quite. not yet. Aurora's still there. Okay. Never mind. Tony just messaged me, so it sounds like they're getting ready, so we should have this next match for you pretty quick. Alright. So, one thing I wouldn't be surprised to see, I kind of want to see, is Lords just bring a full Brawl team, just to show they can. Now they're in. There we go. My entire friends list went from blue to yellow. Teal to yellow? What color I, is that, anyways? I, I hate... So here, here's a confession. I hate the color teal. It's not that I hate the color, I hate the word teal. It just doesn't sound good to me. Teal Jaguars? <laughs> yes! I'm changing your logo after the show. I'm going to make you a custom one. Alright, so it looks like <laughs> we have SWK spawning as red. Once again, the Lords spawning as blue team. SWK has achieved the high spawn, whereas Lords have achieved the low spawn. So that means that... I like how you say they've achieved the spawn. Like they have achieved a, the spawn. Well, I mean, it's not like they... Well, I, I mean, I suppose they picked it, but it's kind of decided by the tournament, so I would call it an achievement more than anything else. Hey, man, don't make fun of my words. So it looks like the Lords have brought... Uh, let's actually check this exactly. Yeah, a ton of victors. Oh, I, I actually checked the builds. Yeah, I do not see PPCs. Those are SRMs. Yes, SRM AC20. Looks like those are 9Ss. I think I know that build. That should be an SRM... AC20 and a couple medium lasers, so they are going to go for the brawl. SWK, it looks like they're dr they have brought uh, dragon slayers, so I see a lot of PPC gauze actually, uh, maybe even a couple double AC5s for them. So if Lords takes they this engagement, mix. they did bring a mix. But I, I think if if the Lords take this engagement really really fast, they're going to have the advantage because they're getting close. And if you see right now, Caffy, Proton, and Rickrom are already pushing up close to these other victors. But SWK is bringing their embers around behind. This this could be an interesting engagement. Lords is actually kind of split up. They have a lot of light mechs not in the fight. Yeah, not just that, but they've got uh, Banana Muffin, Sun Cobra off here in the back, which means that if SWK rolls in right now, they don't have a local overmatch. And they're, they're, it looks like they're going for it. A lot fighting. of fire is being exchanged. These embers are actually doing a ton of work. Caffey's already down to below 70%. This is a really quickly developing fight. Uh, it looks like Lords is trying to rotate through the city a little bit, get some distance. It looks like Peepers is actually stuck within the enemy team, taking a lot of fire in his light mech. So this rotation is uh, sort of going for Lords. They're trying to get in close. Third World, in what appears to be a splat cat, is taking a lot of fire gets off a couple good volleys a huge damage on Addy right there uh, but oh, and the first mech actually does go down in third world in that splat cat so it looks like SWK is now trying to get in behind a UAV goes up they're trying to take off these rear mechs from the Lords trying to do as much damage as they possibly can score is currently even at two to two and Grimlock and his these other dragon slayers looks like they're trying to pin out banana nut muffin and Heim delight who are sort of separated while the rights the lights run amok in the rest of uh, the Lords mechs if I have to give the edge here, though, I have to give it back to Lords because they, through that movement there, they were a bit more coordinated than the SWK team. SWK pushed a little too far uh, into the buildings, and that took some of their guys out of the fight for a while. But as we speak, it is still four. Actually, now it is five to five. Really wow, this is really close. So this is actually staying but incredibly the edge is close. Lords, because uh, a lot of the SWK remaining are very very damaged i yeah and i agree and sdbk remember these victors if they lose their ammo if they lose their ballistics that means they've just got ppcs so they're not going to be effective at close range obviously chapter in a victor getting focused down by the lord's lights and we see a couple more oh wow yeah that score really shifted quickly down to just two mechs left for sdbk these two light mechs looks like sdbk was doing well but they were taking a lot of damage in the process it looks like they were securing kills evenly but lords was just putting on more extra damage on other mechs fast and we see these last two embers fighting Arara and Weeby trying to get the kill. Looks like Arara goes down, Weeby goes down, Lords take game number three.
And again, Lord's movement in this match was just a little bit better than SWK's on the push, even though they were the ones who got pushed into. They managed to rally, shift out of that, and reform in uh, good cohesion and get their focus fire going. While SWK had a couple guys just pushed a little too deep, a little too far out of position. Uh, for example, Third World in this Catapult A1, he was off on his own in the middle of the entire Lord's team. And it looks like his ears might have gotten stripped off pretty quickly because he only managed to get 100 damage out of a 6 SRM6 Black Cat. Yeah, so and let's... If, he had, if he had managed to play it a little more... I was going to say, let's take a, really. uh, a look at the map quick. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. Here. I'm going to draw like what I saw. Yeah, so do you want to take SWK and I'll take Lords? Uh, I was actually going to do both. Just zoom in on like the D4, D5, like where it happened. As we figure out our little map tactic here. Oh god. Don't don't hit what delete. Do do? It doesn't it doesn't delete the line. Uh Okay. Hitting delete will in fact not delete the line. Yeah, you click clear canvas for that. Yeah, I, I I'm aware. Okay, so okay. we have we're zoomed in on that area. So why don't you take us through a little Excellent. bit of those movements there? Alright, so lords were initially posted up, pretty spread out. Sketch. Through this entire set of buildings. What that meant was the God, don't side. use blue. Don't use blue? But blue is blue on the map. Fine. I'll use I'll use yellow and red. Yeah. Yellow is Lords, red is SWK. There you go. But this backside of the Lords team was not in the fight when SWK initially pushed. SWK did a push basically straight in at the Lords. And they managed to get some good damage in on the near guys, especially Kaffee Angst. And Kaffee Angst ended up posting up here, basically on the numbers in D4, behind the building. And what that did was it actually baited the entire SWK team, barring one or two of them, trying to push straight in at him. And at the same time as this was happening, the rest of the Lord's team had swung all the way up and around. And this is actually where uh, Third World got split off, was because he saw this happening, and he was trailing the push, and he went off, and he got caught off over here. I should be doing that in red, so I'm consistent. I'm sorry, guys. And yellow, yeah, anyways. It's okay, so people will understand. <laughs> anyways, point is, he got caught off over here, murdered by the entire team. Same time his team was murdering, SW, uh, SWK was murdering Kathy Angst down here by D4 numbers. The thing is that at this point, let me clear canvas. No, oh, would reset. Whatever. It's fine. Don't worry about it. People will be able to see. At this point, SDPK was caught out with several of their guys behind these buildings, unable to contribute to the fight, while a few of their guys were a couple avenues closer and about to bear take the entire brunt of the uh, House of Lords push. And from that point. They traded evenly initially, but that middle stage was where House of Lords grabbed the advantage, right here, when SWK was split up. And that was enough to make it uh, a pretty convincing win for an all-out brawl like that. It ended, I believe it was 12-6, so SWK did a lot better than they had previously, but not quite enough. One has to wonder how much of an effect it was that SWK did not commit fully to the brawl, because they did have, from what I saw, about three Dragon Slayers that were 2 PPC, 2 AC5. And while that's decent DPS, it isn't going to match the victors with full brawl setups. Especially if you got lights under the guns and just tearing you to pieces. Yeah, I think that uh, what something I noticed there was that the lights for... Uh lords were actually doing they were doing a ton of work whereas it looked like uh the lords are actually doing folk doing a little bit of focusing down of SWK's lights we saw the last couple mechs were actually the those two 
uh, embers, but the rest of them had fallen already. So I think that, I mean, once you have an open component, you cannot underestimate how much, because it is incredibly significant. Like, those machine guns tear through uh, unarmored targets. I think they... It's either double or quadruple. I want to say quadruple, but my head is telling me double. I Maybe hope it's double. double. DPS once it's opened up. If it's quadruple, Jesus. No, it's double. It's double. It's definitely double. It goes from like 1 DPS to like 1.96 or something like that. It's been a while since I run the numbers. Yeah. That was a that was definitely a good fight. Um I think that SWK had the advantage when they were doing the actually I'll draw on the map really quick. We can both do it. So when SWK was doing their rotation, they were sort of moving through these streets up like that. Uh, they had... I don't care that red is the color, so it doesn't matter. Uh, they had the advantage because they had distance, but when it all sort of broke down into a brawl in this area here, that meant that the Lords had the advantage with their closer range bills. So if SWK could have capped the rotation sort of apart, or at least split themselves into two groups rotating together, so that the Lords had to engage one at a time, and then the other one was then able to engage properly with those PPCs, I think it could have gone differently. Well, if we have to like call what we saw, I think the difference is that SWK pushed. They pushed straight down into this line. Oh god, this thing draws terribly. Um, well, the difference is that House of Lords, they rotated out to the side and kept their momentum moving. So at the point where SWK pushed and had to turn around, then your momentum dies. Yeah, I, I agree. It's I just realized I haven't checked TS in forever. Okay. I always just have to make sure, uh... Oh shit, they deployed. Did they really? Don't do that to me. Yeah. Fuck you! Did they really? Yeah. Oh no, they no, 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 it was social lagging. Fuck God no. damn it, I thought you were trolling me. It took like 10 seconds to update and show that they were in lobby again. Yeah, I opened my friends list and there was like nobody there and I was like, oh god, maybe Siri's right. <laughs> I just always assume that if something bad happens while we're streaming that you're actually just fucking with me and that it's not really happening. I'm gonna channel Atkinson go, lol, 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 I troll you. Any case. Yeah. Okay, so... Next drop. Next drop. Heaviest one. 825. HPG. HPG manifold. Heaviest drop, which means it has kind of the most and least potential to be a cap game. If SWK does it correctly, they could just load up on, like, Atlases and then a few Jenners, and then try and go for the cap game if they really want to. But I kind of doubt we'll see that. One of the things that we see a lot on HPG is the team just rushing into the Theta with their entire team after they take the nearest point and the center point, and then bunkering up in there. The thing is that the teams that do it wrong, they bunker up in there the whole game. But if you bunker in there and time your push out correctly for when the opponent goes, okay, I need to turn this into a cap game, I'm going to send my lights off, it can be deadly if you're caught too far down. Or if they don't keep their lights in there and they keep them running around the outside, then the sort of reactions you get, it's it can be tricky. So if you play this right, I do think it can be a cap game. Most of the time, that's going to be from one team's decision to rush the middle. Now, if both teams rush the middle, we're going to see some fun times. So generally, the ones that do decide to rush middle are the ones that are bringing brawlers and know that they're going to win that close-in fight. But I'm not pr making predictions about what the team is doing. SWK is kind of against the wall right now, putting it lightly. 3-0 down for this winner's bracket final. Yeah, so I feel like... And they need, they need to play perfectly from here on out. Okay, so uh, they, they switched a guy out, and uh, he will, I'll be poked again when they're alive. Uh, by the way, really quick, everybody go on uh, Twitter and follow uh, hashtag blame Addy. Uh, it's gonna no, be no, a it's one. hashtag never trust Addy. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll uh, I'll delete that one and make a new one. 
Never trust Addy. Okay, perfect. So that'll that'll be a thing. Let's let's make that happen. Um, I think that HPG. So SWK is in one of two situations right now. They're either thinking, okay, we go balls to the walls, we try something completely different from what we're doing, and see if it pays off, or they're in the mindset of, all right, we've got to fall back on what we're used to, play our game, let's just see how this goes, that kind of thing. So we'll either see a really crazy strat or a very, very standard strat, depending on kind of what mindset they're in. How do you think the lords are feeling in this situation? I'd, <laughs> I'd say they're feeling that they're always feeling pretty damn confident. Okay, like mindset about builds, like what do you think? What do you, like, what do you think they're looking at this match going? Be... So as the lords going on to HPG Relay, what are you thinking in terms of builds? See, if you do bring fast brawlers, you can make it work on this. Because naturally, with the highest ground being the middle, both teams are going to gravitate towards that uh, fight for control of the top. And so even a sniper team is going to get fairly close to that middle. And so you can bring brawlers if you do it fast enough and surprise them just going over the top before they have time to backpedal. Kind of like the Caustic Valley games that we saw uh, during the PGI first engagement tournament. Both Antares Scorpions and 228th uh, use those initial moments of uns uncertainty and the high ground of the, of the Caldera to bait their opponent in and push on top of them. So if House of Lords wants to say, screw you guys, we're brawling, they could still do it on this map. And I think that would be fun to see. Or they could play their standard snipey rotation game, which is still pretty strong. Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how this match plays out. Um, personally, I would really like to see SWG go for something crazy and go for like a bunch of assault mechs and a bunch of light mechs. They dropped. Oh, they did? Yep. Time did not poke me. This time. Yes, you are. They did not drop yet. What? It totally says deployed on my screen right now. I can't connect to Heim's game, and he hasn't poked me in TS. Uh, I don't think he's in the match. Uh, it's connected with Yugo. Because I just did. I couldn't connect to Heim either. Okay, I'm in. You got it? Good. Yes, Good. he said... Good. I, I, okay, he switched out for a player. Uh, I'm in. I probably missed the count-up sequence. It just started. Killer. I'm in. We got this. So, you know what I said about a team br bringing brawlers? What they do. Yeah. SWK has brought brawlers, and so have the House of Lords. Oh, This shit. is going to be fantastic. Fabulous. Okay, so we have, as, traditional, as traditionally stated, House of Lords are in blue. SWK is in red. Let's check out their movements really quick. Looks like SWK has, in fact, uh, won the race to the center. It looks like, well, actually, they're going upper. Let's check out what House of Lords... House of Lords are, in fact, just getting through the door now. It looks like they have brought... Oh, is that... I see Atlases, my favorite mech. I see a Misery. I see some Atlases. This is absolutely terrific. So we do have a Lance of SWK of, mechs already in the center. Here. What was that? Out of SWK, we have five Victors, two Banshees, five Lights. Out of uh, House of Lords, we have four Lights, two Atlases, three Miseries, a Victor, and two Victors, and a Cataphract. And so mechs, both teams very brawl. Mechs straight up just blend into the terrain on this map. But what we do see right now is that a couple of the Light Mechs for the House of Lords did go top to Scout, where it looks like the Atlases and Miseries are filtering down to the bottom, getting that cap point. So we do see that each team has gone for a separate area. Now what this means is that if SWK can take this top area and send their lights out to get caps, they are going to be in control because they will be able to see where the Lords push out and where they're moving. They don't have to push in on this bottom situa uh, on the bottom point. They can actually just move their mechs to different points, get up on caps. Oh my god, Blackie Flawless drops down. He's going to take a ton of damage right here. Why is he exposing himself like that? We see more UAVs go up. Uh, Lords, it looks like, are trying to filter out of this door, maybe. The light mechs are scouting with that UAV. SWK is holding this top area, but it doesn't look like they've sent anybody to get uh, further points yet. So right now, they are actually behind on points. Uh, Lords are up just by a short lead of 15 to 25 points. Um, but they are 
winning the cap game. So it looks like SWK will have to send lights to get a point if they want to play the slow cap style. Meanwhile, Lords, they're just holding on the bottom, man. They're up on caps. Until they see something flash, I think they're going to stay still. They're going to wait until they see one of those points start flashing, and then they're going to realize that they're up on mechs and try and go for an assault. Yeah, House of Lords lights did poke out there trying to find out what they were against, and they got a little lucky in that the... Well, half luck, half skill. They probably had the UAV up. They probably had Seismic from down below to tell them where uh, SWK was and that they were going to be on this far side here. But their lights poked up this uh, side entrance here, just trying to get eyes. And if any of the heavies had been looking down, they might have taken hits, but it was just the light on light skirmish. Nothing big happened. Yep. And right so, now, it looks like uh, the Lords are, in fact, just spreading out below this area. So if the Lords come out, they're going to probably do so through one of two areas. So this, uh, I would, I think it's the, the southernmost one. I'd have to check the map really quick. Hold on. This. Well, what we're seeing here is what we were discussing before, is that there's a bit of dilemma for the team outside. Yeah, they're down on... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Lord, uh, SWK's SWK is moving in. is dropping in. What is happening? So we see Banshees uh, drop down from SWK on one side, Victors on another side, Lights from a completely different side. They are moving in from as many different po angles as possible, trying to surprise the Lords. I don't think Lords expected them to do this, and that's what SWK was going for. They're going for this all out. We see Lords backing off. This is a tight, tight brawl in this low area. We see uh, one mech has gone down from each side. of uh, Two mechs go down for SWK. This is a brawl that's going to be... Uh, probably in favor of Lords due to the fact that they brought Atlases and Miseries, man. They are all built for this. They don't need I the jump the jets. I think the server died. I think the server is dying. Oh. Yep. We are we lagging out has. a little bit. It we looks like the server. the server has desynced. Woo! That's probably Well, weird. here's the fun thing. I know PGI is watching, so if you didn't think it was a problem before, mm, here you go. No, it probably our fault. We added two more people to the server. No, it would have. There were like six emers in this game, dude. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Look at these mechs. Look at how pretty that So, is. let's go ahead and quit out of this match? <clears throat> yep. As soon as we leave, it's going to like reboot back up and they're going to finish it. I'm just kidding. No, it, it doesn't recover from these things. Okay, so. That was interesting. Just before I quit, I'm trying to find out what died from the SWK side, because when it froze, SWK was down 3-1. to one. They had lost Grimlock 1, Bradley USM, and Blackie Flawless. So I'm trying to figure out what next they were. Gotcha. I see a Victor that's dead. I see another Victor that's dead. Yeah, it looks like they did a, they did a split push, and Lords focused down one avenue of that split push. And I... I think just looking at the numbers when it did freeze, SWK was behind. Yep, uh, so it looks like they have agreed to a uh, redrop, so they're all just going to quit out of that match, and they'll redrop. So, sorry for the delay about that, guys, but these things do happen. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's... Nudge, nudge. They, know, I, they know about it, man. They're working on it. It's not like... If they knew what it was, it better be fixed. Um... So, hmm, that was an interesting engagement. I have to say, I'm really surprised SWK went for that. Do you feel like they were under pressure from being behind and trying to force something that they didn't want to happen? Or maybe, but the thing really is, is they they weren't down on caps by that much. Down on caps by. Well, I'm talking like down in the series, and just because yeah, I am very confused by their decision to drop in because they had pretty good control of all of the different avenues if Lords had decided to push out, and all they would have needed to do was send one, two lights to decap a couple points. Bam, they're up three to two, four to one. So yeah, I I. I guess that might have been it, but honestly, the the decision to make in that case is send like a light because it, it's that early in the game. You've already established that your opponent is probably going to sit there, so 
move out, like send one light to cap one point, and suddenly they are the ones who have to make them move out. And they have to make it out from a low ground position, and they really only have two positions that they can push out of. Two of those doors have very long approaches that don't allow you to shoot up quickly at all. So it would have had to have been like, basically one of two ways. I, I don't know, I just uh, feel like the decision to drop in was bad. But we won't it doesn't doesn't matter because that game doesn't count. <laughs> so well, it's all about the next I know, game. I know SJR played a very similar situation. I'm trying to remember who it was against. I want to say it was against the series leaning off Cam team. There you yes, go. Yes, it was against. <laughs> it was literally like half of your face. You were sitting there as just like, oh wow, series glasses look really, really, really professional tonight. And then you're like, ah, I'm completely off. I. I want to say it was the uh, old Blackstone Warden. Yes, Warden was their uh, team that was playing Merrick Civil War. Uh, and we had that sort of cap game. And we were actually the ones who took brawlers and sat underneath. But what we ended up doing was we had, I think it was four out of our five lights came outside and were focusing on capping. So they sort of had uh, that dilemma of chase the lights outside or push the guys inside. And they decided to try and chase. And eventually we played skittish enough with our lights that they couldn't pin us down and ended up winning it by caps. And eventually actually tried to death push us. And that didn't succeed. So kind of by caps and kills at the same time. Anyways, enough of that. My point is here that the Lords, when they were inside, they had their entire team inside. And so they gave up a lot of their mobility. And I feel like they would have better off perhaps keeping their lights outside. Or because any sort of push, even if it was that 12v8, is going to be pretty difficult to pull off when SWK is sitting on top. They have Seismic to show them exactly where they're going. And they have guys with massive weaponry on those Banshees, on those Victors, who are just going to be shooting down, coring the hell out of you. They have the high ground. It's going to take you a while to overwhelm them. And by the time you get there, their buddies from the other exits are going to be joining up with them. So that's why I was not completely s sure if SWK was comfortable with that push. And why I was confused a bit by Lords putting all their guys inside. So I, I understand what loads were going for, and to be honest, in that engagement, they totally, I, in my opinion, they totally would have crushed it. They had atlases and they had miseries. Like, that would have... That would... Just in terms of builds, they had the upper hand. And SWK chose, chose to engage them on their ground, which I thought was a little bit weird. But so... The interesting thing about that is that I feel like SWK could have just gone for caps and been totally fine. Because you're right, Lords was in the disadvantageous position. Well, here's a question for you again. Did SWK know that Lords had brawlers? I mean, it's reasonable to infer that if your enemy is sitting on Theta, he's going to bring brawlers. But did they know? Had they scouted it? Or was it just, hey guys, maybe they're snipers, we should push this. Did they know like a hundred percent? No, no way. But that's a I mean, like, that's if they had scouted the right side when those atlases were coming in. That's a pretty big tell. They didn't though. The, the atlases snuck around the edge and underneath before SWK had the complete top because SWK pulled one lance up on the north side of the HPG relay and sat it there, and then uh, the atlases came in from would have been like the the southwest side and they came in through that lower entrance so they weren't scouted at all as far as i know um my assumption would be then that i guess they just felt under pressure what's really going to be interesting is to see if either of them change their deck i mean are they allowed i think they are allowed to change their deck but well certainly they're allowed to under the fact that if they agree Maybe they just say, okay, no embers for this drop. Because, like, I mean, that might happen. I mean, if they want to if they want to get it played and stuff like that. As long as they're each handicapped similarly, they probably would agree to it. Um, 
Addy would be very sad, but at this point in time, with what he did earlier, fuck Addy. Um, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag never trust Addy, guys. That's why the server broke. It's Addy's fault. So, that is kind of the thing. I'm wondering if they are playing mentally under pressure because they're 3-0 down and they're making decisions they wouldn't normally make. Uh, we've kind of seen this in their previous series against Lords when their backs were against the wall. They went for moves that were a bit questionable, a bit completely different from what they normally do. So. Yep. Uh, I just asked, I mean, I think Lego is in chat, so I'm hoping he'll respond. Um, okay. Patty in chat. Yeah, no, I saw it. Quote, just for the record, sniping is pretty broken and the dominant strategy because brawling breaks servers. I think it, it, it's just MGs mostly, isn't it? It is, well, it's MGs and to are the worst, and to a certain point, lasers also add on to it because they do a tick of damage every time. It's all of these constant, the ones that are constantly checking for impact. Gotcha. Mostly these hit scan weapons. Lego that says. really exacerbate the crashes. Lego says, uh, under normal circumstances, no, you are not allowed to change uh, drop decks, but in this case, you would allow it or switching maps. So I'm sure they're working it out right now. Mag is actually, that's not the game I was referring to, but Mag was saying we also beat 228 when we were controlling Theta from underneath. Well, that's definitely not the one I was thinking of. I think oh, God, I remember that. That was ages ago. Yeah, it was. Oh wow, that was in... <sighs> that was like second or third turn America, I think, wasn't it? They dropped. Alright, so it looks like we'll see what they're gonna do what? once we get into the match. Fuck it. Why is this River City? Ah, uh, they are allowed to switch. What? Okay. Maybe they went for... Maybe they both were like, okay, we brought Brawling Dex, let's just go for a smaller map and hope it doesn't cause problems. Yeah, it looks like they have the same drop decks, but a different map, so... Let's let's check the chat log and see if they're just being like, Ah, totally fucked up! But I'm assuming they didn't, because it doesn't change. Although they would have all had to quit out of the server, so... Slow clap! TK. Lol! <laughs> they did it wrong. The wrong one. God Addy. damn it. Oh, it's Addy's fault! Oh show, yes. Show the uh, logs, show okay. The chat logs for stream show that this is yep. Addy's fault. So really quickly, I just like to say, uh, House of Lords, I feel like uh, certain players on your team have fucked up enough tonight that they need, you know, they, I think they need a, a competitive cooldown. <laughs> Addy, Ravel, if you're reading this, you should shame. Oh, apparently it's Caffy's fault. Oh, is it Caff's fault? Oh no, also Addy, because it's Whatever, really his it's not fault. Calf's fault. No, 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 it's Addy's it's all, fault. It's all Addy's fault. It's Addy's fault. There we go. <laughs> yep, I, I agree. Type to them. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be wait, can we can we type to them? No, we can't. Damn. Yeah, okay, so they're gonna be redropping this and doing it on the correct map. It looks like they're keeping the same drop decks, uh e embers and all, so. I guess they're just gonna hope for slower engagements like I'm not really sure what they think is going to change but we'll see Carl Berg Can furious Carl Berg furiously right slaps away are. at his laptop uh, assigning a private server to this match no I'm just kidding that would be fun be pretty sick but um, House of Lords proving that they're even pretty good at suiciding yeah man I mean sometimes when you just got to kill all your own people you just got to kill all your own people and I'd have a lot of frustration with Addy too, so you'll notice he was the first one to die. One thing to note is that this took a minute and 26. The record I've seen is about 35 seconds, so... Oh, wow. Team coming even close to that. Who, uh, who took that record? Wow, it was so long ago, but it was Terra Therma. It was, a, uh, I think it was a very laser-based one. Oh, so yeah, just everybody, yep, quick. yep. That or, uh... 
what map is it that you can run yourself out of bounds super fast? Um, forest colony. Forest, yeah, forest colony on low spawn. You can run yourself Things out of bounds you know. super quick. Things you know when you've had to do sync drops and you've had to do suicides. Oh my god, remember when we drops. had Siri? Siri, remember when we had to do sync drops? I tried to repress those memories. How do I quit out of this game? I don't know, man. I can't. Killing. I I can't until we're there out. There we go. Anyways, there we go. It's out. That's the timeout. Anywho. Okay, so. Not only did they drop on the wrong map, three. they dropped on assault. <laughs> oh. <God. laughs> oh my so god. So good. Oh. <laughs> so good. So perfect. Kinkitty, you still owe me, Fritz. I'm infinitely proud. Prop 4.1. <sighs> okay. Okay. Um... I assume they'll- What else do we have to say? I'm gonna assume it's still HPG, because... Yeah. So... Getting back to that. Same drop jacks. Does SWK rush more? They're possibly? in! They're in already! Shit! They're in? Whoa, okay. It's on HPG! Really on Conquest! Them. They did it correctly. Okay, cool. I keep accidentally switching to the wrong overlay. <laughs> well, at least we actually have our comms up this time. Oh! Like that time you didn't. Hey man, only once. Okay. That was with Go Eagle, back. that wasn't Same even with you. Five, drag five victors, two Banshees, five lights out of SWK. Wow, these approaches. Two Atlases, three Miseries, two victors, a Cataphract, and four lights out of House of Lords. These approaches are actually almost identical. You see the victors moving up onto the top, you see the Atlases and the Miseries going down beneath. Um, all of them are getting in at about the same time. I would say that Lords is actually a little bit behind getting in, but they're actually they're actually just going for the exact same strategy. Lords is, I mean, sorry, SWK is getting a little more aggressive, trying to get shots down, a bit of damage. Black Draken, though, is losing his trade. He's only put out 1% of damage onto Kaffeyank's uh, Atlas, and both Blacky Flawless and Black Draken have dropped 8 and 5, respectively. That's true, so, that could be a lot of leg damage from jump shutting, though. I don't think it was jump jetting, I just think that uh, Lords had better laser work. So now here's where SWK needs to make that push, because they've got Victors out completely in the back by themselves, and Alice is completely underneath, so SWK, if they can if they can identify this... They're trying to catch Nuke here. They're they are. catch Nuke's misery off the back. Oh, and that mech is super unmaneuverable, and you see Lords is actually... They're grouping up by this exit. They, this might be bait, actually. We see tr Captain Terrific. Well, if oh, boy. He's taking a, Nuke has taken a lot of damage, down to 78%. But oh, I mean, oh, no, why did oh, you oh, was that a headshot? No, it was just the entire team just CT'd him. Oh my god. Okay, so that means that uh, SWK is actually down one mech right now. They lost a victor in that engagement, and they're still trying to peek. It looks like uh, Lords is actually up on cap ag go bad again by about bad, thirty points. But now SWK is down a mech. Oh, that's brutal. And it looks like the light mechs are maybe trying to sneak out here. No, they're just running around doing light mech stuff. Just light mech things. Just, just hashtag light mech things. All right, we see a UAV go up from Peepers trying to get uh, an idea about where SWK is. Uh, I, I think that, man, Lords has got to be really happy with that kill. I feel like they're probably just going to do the same thing they did last time and hold underneath. Uh, I feel like it would really behoove SWK to send... Oh, yeah, 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 there we go. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a lot of mechs, though. They've sent all their light mechs. That's perhaps a little unnecessary. I feel uh, like there they can is do... a lot of time to flip those points, and with all their light mix away, that that lets the heavies kind of out the dry. I, I agree. I thought a rhyme, but it didn't work. To be uh, fair, though, uh, <laughs> SWK is holding this, this topmost point, so Lords is going to have a very long engagement. They're going to have to pick one of these two, uh, the north exit and the east exit, to the the bottom, because the other two ones... Uh, Although although the west exit does provide cover, it's really long, and same with uh, the south exit. There's just way too much to get through right there, and it does look like they are they are moving out the northern exit. They're trying to loop around. They're going to try and do some damage. They see that these mechs are capping, and so these assault mechs for SWK are just going to be completely hung out to dry. There's no way that those light mechs from SWK can get back in time. Yeah, and they didn't even go for the close cap. 
Lots of damage goes Tokyo down on Twinkie. Banshee now is getting pushed on by the entire team here. Uh, Cafe Angst, DDC leading Sun Cobra, Schopenhauer, all the House of Lords pushing up. Cafe Angst is forced to drop back down, but the lights from uh, House of Lords are trying to work the flanks here and just break up the formations a little, get some harassment in. But now the Miseries and the Atlases are getting here, though, and those mechs are going to be able to tank absolutely incredibly although nuke is down to just 64 percent he's pushing up kind of on his own he's taking in he's taking a lot of fire and doing a lot of damage himself but its score is still one to zero. Oh, another stbk mech goes down imminent drops uh and it looks like a banshee drops lights. as well they're just capping they're not coming back they're just capping oh they're, they're fully committed to this cap game they just want to make their heavies last as long as possible oh and do you see this the most damage swk is going for lord's light mechs in this brawl that's what they're trying to do they're trying to get the advantage here by going for the light mechs trying to take down these light mechs but i i don't think they got enough they only got one ember and it's just it's just psu up in terms of heavy mechs and grimlock and, the and a victory they, they should have a four cap now i'm going to double check this the lights are kind of they're they're pushing back in but they're they're pushing into the entire lord's team it is a 3 to 1 on caps, 375 points, uh, 380 now. They should have Kappa soon, but that's not going to be enough. Epsilon only has about maybe 20% of the bar filled. These, these light mechs only has 10% of the bar filled. That just requires one mech getting there for about 5, 6 seconds to turn these points off. These SWK lights really need to bail. They're taking a losing fight right now because they're fighting with an Atlas as well as a Victor and in the other team's lights. There's so, only three of them. Yeah, one of them already went down. And and Captain Terrific is out of the fight. He's capping. So that means it's just White Death and Weavy out trying to take on this whole Lord's team. And, oh my god, and White Death, is down. White Death goes down. He the straight into, like, two Miseries, three Miseries of Victor and an Ember. That means Weavy so, is out by himself and Captain Terrific, they're, they're completely separated. I, I don't think they can cap this. Like, this... Even at this point, if Captain Terrific just went and hid and never got caught, House of Lords has enough time to spread out, turn all these points off, and win it for themselves on cap. Oh but man, Weeby is just taking a ton of oh, damage. Is Captain too. Terrific running out of bounds? Uh, yeah. Yes. No? Maybe, maybe, maybe you can stand up there without being out of bounds? But Weeby is going to go down in a second. He's yep. got. Uh, Captain Terrific is powered down. Two generators on him. So he's just going to hide up there, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Actually, Addy just died. Wow, uh, that's actually oh, a, a good you. kill. Whoever just team killed Addy, thank you. You're my hero. Oh my god, um, Addy got team killed? Yep. <gasps> so happy. Think, pretty sure. I, it might have been Shope. Shope might have killed him. But, uh, <laughs> so that means that there are only two light mechs alive for the lords. But, man, I... Well, you see here, Nuke and Rickrom are already at Kappa here, and they're gonna be decapping it. Yeah, what's the current cap count? I I, I don't bring that. I can't bring that up without checking it somebody's is, screen. It is. It's six hundred points for oh, SWK. Oh, and Kaffi might Gamma's see Captain. It's at about sixty percent full. Oh yeah, Captain's and been spotted. It's dropping too. quickly. Sigma is at ten percent, and the remaining House of Lords lights are almost on top of it. Plus. Yep. They see Captain Terrific. Captain Terrific, he might be able to take out Nuke and maybe even Rickrom. I mean, Miseries are... It's not going to matter, though, because even if he does that, he's not going to get away. Seleth is hunting him down with this Ember. Uh, oh. Oh. Captain Terrific Oh, he got legged. Damn. Whoever pulled that off was excellent shot. Great shot, yeah. All right, so that means Which with that... surprising. With that leg, yeah, it shouldn't. But with that leg, that means that this game will go in favor of Hustle Lords. Although, Captain, he's holding up. I, I, I think it might have been Nuke here in the 2PC 1 AC20. Ah, uh, there leg. he goes. All right, yeah. and so that means that the Lords have, in fact, taken this best of seven series 4 0 against SWK. I think their SWK just tried to hold that top with all their heavies no matter what. I'm wondering if they had just, when they saw. Uh, House of Lords pushing out with their heavies, and they just ran the opposite way. Run the opposite way with all your heavies. See what happens. Like, force their heavies to take a while to get to you, and just draw out that death as long as possible. Barring that, if they had wanted to actually take and win a fight, only sending off... One light. Know, one, two of their lights, one to each of the cap points, and win that way, and still have some two, three of their lights in the fight, and actually helping out. Because one thing that happened was that the... House of Lords lights were swinging around the sides and getting quite a bit of work done. At the same time, forcing SWK's attention to split from the main threat of the heavies coming up in their face. So, yeah. House of Lords uh, finishes that out. 10, 
mechs remaining to the 12 dead of SWK with a good damage spread from the entire House of Lords team. Yeah, so... And not terribly threaded on caps. It was at about uh, 650 when it ended, but they were about to decap everything. Yep. So, with that game, House of Lords is going to take the series 4-0 and wait in that final br or winner's bracket position for their challenger to slog their way through the loser's bracket. Oh, hold on, I have a little winner text. Yay, winners! Woo. Um... Let's bring up the map here really quick. There was something... Uh, I actually had the, the cardinal directions wrong on the map when I was talking. So, the, the two doors that I had been talking about that were off-limits, in my opinion, are this door here and this door here, both of which offer a, a too-far approach. So what we saw in that engagement was that Lords took the bottom, and Lords will be in red, because that is technically what their spawn was in. Um, so they took the bottom, and then they waited, and they were able to push out of this door here, fold up from two different sides, and then take the top um, up here. And while they did that, SWK had their lights off capping Sigma, and so what I think SWK could have done, we'll use yellow for SWK, is Siri mentioned falling back with their heavies. So because because SWK said all of their light mechs to Sigma, which is the farthest cap point, uh, they could have gone to Kappa. If they had wanted to, they could have fallen back. If you fall back out this door and you wait on either side here and send one mech to Kappa, that becomes a very dangerous situation to push into because then you're all of a sudden in a crosswire between two groups of mechs if Lords had followed them out. And then SWK would have still been up on caps with Epsilon and Gamma and Sigma and even Kappa. They would have been in an even better position. So personally, that's how I would have played it from their uh, side. Not sure how you feel. Yeah, and I do find it that was a very curious move to go for Sigma before Kappa. Not only is with the return all. time a lot further, it took a lot more to get there. Going out E6 all the way wrapped around... Um, I feel if they had just flipped Kappa, sent most of them back, one like the Sigma to deal with that, you got a, well, 10 versus 12, because should be an 11 versus 12, but that Victor uh, kind of kind of dropped in and got focused out. Yeah, that was, a, that was an unfortunate mistake at the beginning. Uh, they might have been able to do a little bit more damage up top. Um, yeah, uh, is there anything else you want to mention about that game? Um, People don't usually like to stick around for too long afterwards, so I just thought we could finish any last words no. and then move on. No, I think <laughs> we covered most of it yeah. in the build-up. Yeah, I agree. Version three of Drop Four. So <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I guess that that just means congratulations to House of Lords. That was a well-fought series. Uh, so SWK, let's take one more quick look at the map. So SWK will move on to face the winner of the winner of 2 through 8 versus SIG versus the winner of SGR versus Golden Kashyyyk. The winner of that match will face SWK, and then the winner of that match will face Lords in the finals. Just as an aside, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Keshek. Keshek? Did I say Kashik? I bet. Keshek. Sorry. At least you can say Kish. I mean, so so I have this thing where I hate mispronouncing names, so that's good to know. Uh, Golden right. Kish just brings all the wrong images to mind. It, Tasty, but. It wasn't. It Addy was not killed by a TK. You lied to oh, me. Oh, I would have been so much happier if it had been. I know. Uh, all right, so that means it's the end of the show, and once again, congrats to House of Lords. Uh, SWK is not out of the tournament, remember, this was their first loss, so they will be able to slug back through the loser's bracket uh, if they are able. Um, Siri, do you have any shout-outs? Uh, shout-out officially to... Oh god, I don't know his first name. Shout-out to Nima from PGI. I feel terrible. I can't remember what your first name is, but the guy who did all of the 
uh, hit reg fixes. Buckton was the one who found it, but Nemo was the one who fixed it. And we actually saw this in action on Sunday. I did an impromptu cast of the Ranging Guard versus Black Spikes, uh, the EU run hot or die. And in the last drop of that, it was the light drop, 8v8. Ranging Guard brought like three Griffins. And their SRMs tore shit up. Like there was Kaffee Angst was in an ember and his both his legs were like light yellow internals, which normally takes like a 20 each to take him out, or like some really astoundingly good laser hit reg to take one out. And I was spectating this Griffin, and he was down one SRM, so he was down the three SRM sixes. He double light calf with one shot. It was beautiful. SRMs were regging. It was oh my god, what is this? So like, between that and the jump jet changes, you want to say brawling is alive? Well, here you go. So, shoutouts to Nemo. Buckton, please pass that along. Also, <laughs> shoutouts to Buckton for finding the issue. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Alright, that means it's my turn. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. It's fun to do this in a new venue. Glad to have you guys watching. Uh, as usual, for me, follow me on Twitter, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Twitch. Follow Siri on Twitch. Siri streams now. What the hell, guys? Siri's a good player, if he's a, even if he's a dirty light. You're, are you just SJR Seriothrax, or are you just Seriothrax? Just Seriothrax. Follow twitch.tv slash Seriothrax. Follow twitch.tv slash RuffleWaffle49. Follow MW Pro if you're not already, which is the site we're on, so you should know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Because we wear suits and ties because it's MWO professional. God, man, look at how professional. This would never fly on my stream, man. All we'd be doing on my stream is I'd be here. I'd probably be like half shirtless. I'd, I'd be more drunk than I am. So this is this I have is a professional. question for you. Yo. This is a very important question, and inquiring members of the community want to know. Oh God. Does your shirt have sleeves? Yes. Of course. Although I, sh I oh believe, my god! I believe in five minutes, Tribird is going to be very disappointed. Siri, you know what we gotta do? We gotta do a a Tribird edition of Professional, where we just wear we wear like dress shirts with cut off sleeves. There we go. That's the Tribird special. Okay. Uh, jokes aside, thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, follow those Twitters, follow those YouTubes, follow Siri on Twitch. Damn it, get that kid some support. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Uh, I think I'm going to actually be streaming again tomorrow. Triber did hit me up for the SJR match with Sirius be playing in, so he can't cast it, but I can. So I believe that we'll have another cast for you guys tomorrow night. Uh, once again, really appreciate it. Thanks for being here, guys, and uh, we will see you guys later. Night, guys.